guys, how's it going? Thanks for watching my last video where I react to the SMB3 warpless task. What's awesome about that video is we were actually able to take a couple things from that and add it to the new warpless route. I'm gonna be doing world record attempts and using some of those new strategies. I really like that. I love all the positive feedback we got in the comments, so thank you so much. With that, what we're actually gonna do now is I'm gonna to wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about what was wrong with my GDQ run. I'm not sure if any of you guys noticed out there, like it, it seemed like I was kind of off my game a little bit for some of the parts. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly break down a couple of the things that made my run, you know, not exactly the way you would have expect. And honestly, I really do think this was my worst GDQ run in terms of performance with Super Mario Brothers 3. So let's take a look. The iconic 1-1. One, one. Okay, so 1-1 one, one is by far like the worst level at GDQ for Super Mario Brothers 3. You can you can hit the piranha plant, you can miss the turtle shell, you can die on the 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 bouncing Koopas, you can miss the Koopas. Oh my god, the 1-1 one, one is just a nightmare. So the first mistake we have to go through, and honestly, I wouldn't say that 1-1 one, one was a direct mistake cause with like how I was off my groove that day. But I will say that that is definitely something that can throw you for a loop. So if you watch, 1-1 one, one went pretty well. I did my normal shell hit. Like, everything looks great. I'm in the bottom left, by the way. And then I come up and I miss the turtle bounce right on the side. And then it just costs me such a dumb amount of time right off at the start. If there was one way where the game wanted to discourage you right at the beginning, that would have been exactly, exactly what I needed to go wrong to really get me in the slumps at the start. We move forward and my next big mistake oddly enough was one three so i do the i do the slow uh, koopa kick to ensure that p speed and the level goes pretty well and then as i'm doing my jumps i you know what like let's go back i don't know what happened there i jumped on there and then if you watch I, you can see me land and i i i think i was thinking oh god i'm not gonna hit this i'm gonna have to jump because it really does look like i'm not gonna land on the platform and then all of a sudden i made it and I must have missed my press and look at it. It just really messed me up. I didn't rebuild P speed and then I finally rebuilt it. Just a silly mistake that, that costs you um, just a dumb amount of time. So as you can see, I skipped all the way up to World 3. World 2 was a pretty standard level. World 2 went, went pretty well. I didn't have uh, too many problems with that. And as you can see, I, me bottom left, hacks are top left. I have actually managed to catch up quite a little bit and actually take second place at this point. Uh, Stewie ended up taking third. I have 55 coins, right? And my tens digit on my score is zero. Now, if you finish the level with evens, then my tens digit will change by five. And if you end the level with an odd time on your timer, you end the level with the same amount. Your, your tens digit doesn't increase. So I had to run under and stand there until I got an odd number and my tens digit didn't change to a five because if my tens changed to a five, I would have got a coin ship and I would have lost the race for sure. So that right there is definitely my next uncomfortable, uh, I can't believe this happening. Lost me time for no reason, stupid coin ship stuff. And it's just, I shouldn't be having to worry about any kind of problem like that. At least I got peace speed there though. That's pretty good. My next silly mistake that cost me a little bit more time, as always, was actually landing right on this, I don't, I don't know, I think it's called the, the flippers, the spinners. I think they're called the spinners. I land right on the spinner, right in the center, and I almost went through it. You can go through the spinner. I actually did it today on stream. It caused me to reset. It was horrible, a nightmare. So what I did was I landed, and look, what is he doing? I didn't press left on the D-pad. I swear to God, I didn't press left. But anyways, I, I don't know what happened, but I hit the center and I just came to a dead stop. Luckily, luckily, I've made that mistake so many times for the past couple years. I think everyone makes that mistake. I know that if I do a full big jump from this spot, I can land on that first brown block that you see and then do a duck jump and hit the, hit the other block. Boom, boom, and then I'm good to go. So luckily... I'm able to get myself out of that mistake. Just, it's a nightmare though. It's a nightmare. It's the whole thing. I've had, you know, I do the hardest level in 3-2 and then 3-1 and 3-3 then three, and three, three are already, are they're already attacking me. They're already attacking me. RTA runners are always so worried about getting uh, Runaway Bro in World 3 and Runaway Bro in World 3 can still affect you in 100%. I don't think it really necessarily causes like huge resets, but it can definitely cost you a good amount of time, especially in a race. If one person gets Runaway Bro and the other person doesn't, that's bad news. I actually have a video of Runaway Bro in my YouTube uh, playlist that teaches you about what Runaway Bro is and why it affects World 3 so much. It's really interesting. But anyways, as you can see, when I finish this fortress, 
the Hammer Brothers ended up moving in a very, very. Uh, it just made me uncomfortable. This this whole run, I've I've just been uncomfortable. I'm not feeling it. It's just not a good day for my gameplay. Um, so what happens is that I I see that and it like messes with me. I'm scared. I'm like, oh man, if I just if I get run away, it's just gonna throw me behind even more. I need to not get run away. So what happens here is that as I move on the overworld map, I mess up my movements. And that actually costs me more time. If you can, when I, whenever I play, you guys are gonna see that I'm gonna sit on the one tile for I don't even know how long. Watch. See that? See how I just sat on the tile after the Hammer Brothers moved and just. It's because I missed my input. Like I messed up, and it just it's in my mind right now. Like I look happy, but I'm not. I'm not happy. I'm like, why am I making these weird mistakes? It's like. I was on top of my game. I just got the 100% world record. Like, things were great. And I was playing like I was rusty. Like, I was on some some break, right? So, Haxer has already finished his Hammer Brothers. And if you look, mine... Because I was worried, right? Mine actually behaved. And I did the wrong one there. I did the wrong Hammer... I was supposed to do the Hammer Brother further away to guarantee that I didn't get Runaway, bro. And I still got lucky. I did the wrong one. See that? Oh, I got so lucky there. When in doubt, guys, just do the further one away. Just do it. One of the biggest hurdles in World 3 is 3-9. And the reason it is is because you have to do this very precise one-tile jump. That's right beside music notes. And essentially, you do a full big jump, you land on it, and then you have to do another full big jump. And if, if you're just right enough, you can make it over the H. And if you're not, it costs you so much time because you're not making it over the H, so you got to grab all these blocks. So if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, this was my next... A uh, pretty big mistake. This is one of the biggest mistakes you can make in World 3 with messing up. Is that what happens is that I run across the block and hit the music note. And it doesn't give me enough height. Ah, oh, the music note. You see that? Let me let me go back here. The music note. I Because I landed on the music note. It just it didn't give me the highest jump I could possibly get. I guess they're, they're somewhat fixed, right? They're, I needed to land a little bit more to the right on the on the grab block ice block I don't, I don't know exactly what they're called but what happened you see that and i just hit the music box boom and i didn't get high enough sometimes you're lucky enough you can clip into the wall and wall jump but not me right so then i did that okay at this point i think i'm losing the race i'm that's it i i really feel like Haxer's on his game and i feel like Stu's on his game i feel like i'm gonna lose the race I've made so many weird mistakes that I, even in my no reset runs at home, I don't make these kinds of mistakes. So I was, I was pretty convinced that that was, that was it. I was, I was, I don't know. I don't think it's good to give up that early. And I obviously I didn't because I mean, I guess if you guys haven't watched this, I'm not going to spoil the end, but you know, although what I just did spoiled it. So I win, I win the race, whatever, get over it um so yeah as you see i have to grab like all these blocks and, it, and it's just an absolute nightmare like look how much longer it takes me to go through finally i'm in the pipe i would have been in there like 10 seconds ago holy crap so i'm a little uh, i'm a little upset not like upset mad i'm just like I, ha I kind of had a feeling this would happen. Here is the biggest turn in the actual race between Haxer and I. So we are on the World 4 airship, and we have to do a very specific fire kill. Luckily, in 100%, it's the same. So this is why this is probably a very frustrating mistake on Haxer's part. But with his big lead, what he actually ended up doing was losing his fire flower against the boss. I haven't got a chance to watch it, so... And he cut the jump too small. If I if I actually rewind this and he takes damage, you can see in his face, yeah, he didn't. Dude, I get it. I get it. It's like one of the biggest mistakes uh, you can possibly make. So him making that mistake means that he doesn't have his Fire Flower for not only 5-1, but he doesn't have it for the uh, Boom Boom. And he has to get it back in 5-3. It doesn't look like I'm in the lead, but I'm already in the lead. So him taking damage there put me in first place instantly. And he knows that, and I know that, and I'm pretty happy. I'm like, I'm like finally, I got like something. That, that was his first uh, big mistake. And unfortunately, the mistake was big enough to uh, turn the course of the race. So I'm able to fire kill. I'm able to shoot the meta my way. I'm able to drop and get early p-speed in comparison and you can already see haxer just grabbed it and i just grabbed it you can see how much i'm already catching up uh the next level doesn't really play a big role with fire flower 
but you can see again how close I am like that that damage and that damage is exactly what allowed me to get the lead back so now because I have fire flower and he doesn't even Stewie is catching up a, a little bit here so I use my music box oh and Haxer had see and because he didn't have fire flower if you look at Haxer's screen as well not having fire flower caused them to get this annoying pattern and he didn't want to lose his big if he lost big Mario here he would have not got Fire Flower for a very long time. It would have put him even further behind. But even that right there, I won't make that mistake because I have Fire. So I'm not going to lose that time on the on the uh, Hammer Brother. Now he has to use a star in 5-3. The biggest turn in this race, I would say, the outcome of the race happened right at the beginning of this world, at the end of World 4 as well. And it's just, it's just crazy. So we're going to look and see who enters uh, the Twisty Castle first. Um... And if you watch in the top left, you can see Haxer, what he has to do to grab his Fire Flower back. He has to wait, wait, lose P-Speed, re-grab it. So he didn't get the Fire Kill on the boss, lost P-Speed, didn't have Fire on the 5-1, messed up the Hammer Brother because not having Fire Flower. It's crazy. Now watch what happens in the bottom left if you do have Fire Flower. Right? It was like, he lost like 30 seconds altogether, which is insane. That is an insane amount. My heart goes out to Haxer because that is the mistake that you do not want to make. So his morale is very low right now. Mine is also still low because I'm super disappointed in how, how I'm playing them. Like the fact that this video is as long as it is it just proves how many mistakes I made. It shouldn't be this long. How many mistakes did I make a GDQ three minute video? I messed up the tunnel. And I got all hands, of course. <laughs> Haxer's on his last hammer, brother. Now look, I entered the twisty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm 10 seconds ahead of him when I was already 10 seconds behind him. So I've gained 20 seconds on him. That's crazy. That's a massive, crazy outcome of the race. Very easy to go unnoticed, but that's exactly how I gained my lead. One of the biggest problems with the way I'm feeling in my run, and I haven't mentioned this yet, is that I forgot to actually bring a bottle of water up on stage with me, and I was already feeling very dehydrated before my race. So at this point in the run, it's really hitting me, the fact that I'm super thirsty. I'm actually starting to get a little too warm, and I'm getting a little dizzy. And it's not something I particularly wanted to bring up, but I do want to share with you guys, honestly, how I was feeling during my race. Whether I won or lost, I'm, I'm not going to say has anything to do with how I was feeling at the time, but I will say I'm not overall in the, the best physical you know, uh, state right now. Um, I'm playing kind of well, but I'm playing sloppy. Um, so this is a good way to indicate like how it's going. I'm going to go back to the first level here and let's watch. I did a monster turn back when I shot my fireballs here, right here. I don't need to turn back that big. I was scared about my jumps. And then, well, at least I made that. So 6-1 is at least pretty easy. All right. Now we fast forward to 6-3 right here. Okay. Um, now I'm doing okay, but I get P speed and all of a sudden my brain goes to a blank. I get P speed. I'm I'm turn back and turn back and you know I'm I'm all flubsy and, and you can see right now even on the even in the camera in the background you can see little Mitch behind big Mitch right there that actually looks amazing is that I'm just not I'm not feeling too hot at all. Um, I was hating how I was feeling and it was uh, really uncomfortable. At least I wasn't hungry and I didn't have to go to the bathroom. At least those two things I didn't have to worry about. My body temperature was very uncomfortable and I'm super thirsty which sucks but I would never use it as any kind of excuse there's no way I would know you know oh, I I lost because I wasn't feeling well mm, can't come out to play today you know like none of that it's like that one guy where you when your kids you play tag and whenever they're they're it they're like I don't want to play anymore god I hated that kid please write in the comments below if you ever had that one friend who like didn't want to play if they were it, you know, and they, they never wanted to participate if it involved actually doing any work. God, I hated those. I had a couple of those friends. I loved Tag, man. I loved Hide and Seek. One of my next biggest mistakes actually comes up in this level right here. You're normally supposed to use a P-Wing, and if you hit enemies in very specific spots and you keep your speed really high when you run down this hill, you can actually jump up and despawn the two nippers. What happens here 
is that I don't actually run down the hill. You can see I'm flying down the hill until I touch the hill and I need to run to get that extra speed to do the sprite overload, which is what causes them to not spawn. And because I didn't get that, um, the nippers stayed there as you can see, right? So I didn't get the boost. So I had to stop. Any other runner would be already be flying up there right now. But as you can see, I'm not. I had to stop, stomp on him, tail swipe, grab, fly up, cause more lag. Then watch, throw, tail swipe. I'm not used to this. I'm messing up. Like, just get in there. Jeez, just get in the pipe. Right, let's see Stu. Let's, let's fast forward to Stu doing it. Okay, there's Stu. Hey, Stu's in the top right. Hopefully, he shows us how it's done. There you go. That's it. That's it. all you. That's all we're supposed to do, and we couldn't do it. We're so bad. Coming up to the next fortress, the second fortress in World Six, was where I made another uh, pretty annoying mistake with my lead. I'm lucky, but I didn't duck there, and it caused me to not get P speed. So I had to backtrack, then rebuild it. And it's just, just a big waste of time. If you look at that, if you look at that one more time, you can see I was supposed to duck jump down this little pit right here. I didn't duck jump. My P meter's not building. I would have died if I tried that. And then I would have added my tail. So because I've been playing for so long, I knew I had to make this kind of backup, which inevitably, you know, these are the reasons why I still won the race, even with the mistakes that I made, because my background goes so far that when I make a mistake, I know exactly how to fix it. I've almost made like as many mistakes as I can think of. And I've made so many of the same ones that when they happen, I'm like, oh, I've done this before. I, I have to do this. And it's, it sucks, but it's something you have to do. Ne definitely another big mistake 610 is so important to do optimally even 610 is so important that if you mess it up you can't get the world record kind of thing you know that that happens to a lot of us you lose lose too much time and let's see i can't remember what happens what happens here ah i didn't grab it but i grabbed it there but then i lost my p speed see it's just a big mistake watch hacks or top left he'll show us how it's done Grab the block, run over, throw block, duck jump, keep P speed, right? Look at how much faster. I'm not even done the level yet, right? And now he's done the level. So, um, oh, Stu had the unfortunate miss of the H. So that was another big mistake that I made that, that really messed me up, man. And again, like I said, I'm super thirsty. I'm not feeling well. Uh, my temperature's rising. I'm just, I'm, I'm overthinking all of the little mistakes I made. I'm questioning my jumps. You know what I mean? I, I Every every jump I make, I'm like, oh, I'm going to die here. Be, you know, but I, that never happens. All the jumps that I make are specific. That's why I make those jumps. So it's just these kind of things can happen when you're in these like tournaments. And sometimes your brain just does a 180. It's almost like it turns on you a little bit. You become paranoid of your consistencies and your jumps. And you keep thinking you're going to make all these mistakes. So you over anticipate and then you start you start looking like you're rusty and you're not prepared. And that's what some of my levels will look like. The, the 610 mistake is normal, but some of the other mistakes are just not, uh, that is just kind of not acceptable a little bit. All right. So we're on our way to world seven. Um, as I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but there's a manipulation that we can do on the boss that actually changes our sub pixel value to consistently be able to get the clip in seven one. You need a very specific sub pixel value to get the clip in 7.1 and if you it's rng because you don't know your sub pixels right but we do know if you do a very specific movement before grabbing your wand um you'll line up your sub pixels to be right whenever you hit the wall in 7.1 so if you watch my character you can actually see i stand under the wand and then i move one pixel across the ground to the right so watch i kill the boss i stand under the wand and then i move one pixel there you go there you go i move one pixel so don't get confused. My feet are moving when I'm trying to line up for it, but I'm not I'm not moving a pixel. You need to move a pixel, not move Mario. All right? Mario will move on a pixel, but just because Mario moves doesn't mean I've moved the pixel. So watch it one more time. There it is. There I did the move. Now watch Haxer in top left does the same thing. There you go. He moved one pixel. And after doing all of that manipulation setup, guess what happens? Do, 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 didn't work. Didn't work anyways. What a surprise. So I think I got mine third try. Nope, fourth. Fifth. Sixth. I got mine sixth try. Haxer. Got his. Nice. 
So the race is back to being close again. And because I didn't get 7-1 and I almost like got behind because of 7-1, this race is so close. I'm just, I'm happy this is done, but I'm still, what am I doing? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what's going on? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not even playing close to as well as you guys would expect. But, you know, it happens. If there's one thing that you don't want to do in this underwater auto scroller level, it's 7-4 is you definitely don't want to take damage from any creature because if you do that then you don't have your tail and you want to save your tail to optimally do the piranha plant level and the up oh, i just lost my tail we're, we're 30 seconds into the level and i lost my tail okay so that's a big time loss if you keep your tail you can use your star on the piranha plant level and then you can keep your tail to do uh i think people call it fort knox but it's the world seven fortress where you need to fly up so now that I don't have my tail, what that means is I have to do the piranha plant slower because I don't have my tail. And then I have to cloud past the fortress, use my P-Wing in 7-6, then travel back to the fortress and use my tail there. Whereas I wouldn't have to do any of that if I kept my tail. But this level doesn't like anyone. And because I'm nervous and I'm not feeling all that great with my, with my run... I get my Fire Flower, which costs me even more time. The game pauses. I almost lost my Fire Flower there. It's just a headache, guys. It's crazy what happened. You do the Piranha Plant level, and if you have your tail, you can flutter across this gap right here. If I had my tail, I would just continue going across. But because I don't, I have to stop, then jump over from that ledge. So that's a big time loss if you think about it. Then I have to power up and go right there. Really annoying. So watch Haxer. Watch what Haxer can do now because he's got his tail. <laughs> you could just go across, right? It's perfect, perfectly safe. Super easy, right? So, oh, yeah. So you can see here, now that I beat it, I have to go, in, go into my inventory, which is slower. Go across, do extra map movements. Go into my inventory again, right? Do P-Wing then fly across whereas haxer can just enter the level right he haxer knows right now he's like okay i'm saving time on him he messed up and and four i also messed up everywhere so now i have to go back into the fortress and i think i did my p speed strategies yes thank god okay right so let's see where we even out i think i'm still ahead though right i think i do i think i land on seven eight before him yeah so we do 7-8, which is pretty stressful in 100%. The Patuis, the things that shoot the little black balls, those are global timers. So whenever I enter the level, everything I do up until that point is going to affect whether they shoot them up or down or move left and right. So this level is very important for you to do the same thing every single time. Now, Haxer messed up a little bit, and I also clipped through the block, and I lost my mushroom. So that was awesome. <laughs> So Haxer messed up the global cycles. So he's like, I'm going for hammer suit because I don't know what the cycles are going to be. And it's very easy to die in this level. And you don't want to die in this level. All right. So he gets hammer suit and he keeps it, which is pretty good. And then boom. And then I got to, I got to P wing this level. Uh, this level is already annoying to P wing. Uh, it's not so bad though. Did we get mid clip though? Nope. Of course not. Mid clip is important. You can see Haxer, he doesn't go for the 7-7 seven, seven clip either. We, I, I myself knew that I wasn't going for 7 clip. Here's my next big thing is that I'm so nervous for this level right now because I'm not feeling very well that I decide to get the star. I'm like, I'm like, screw this. I'm taking the time. I'm sacrificing it. So I didn't do like top tier strats or anything. And I took it nice and slow. I even didn't even try. Oh. Right, I lost my P speed. I didn't die. So here I know if I duck duck slide under, I'm safe. Yep, just duck slide, run. I'll grab my power ups on the airship. Right. So this is another good example of me just not doing very well and just making a whole bunch of these unneeded mistakes. Oh yeah, dude, I really did mess up eight one. Gosh dang it, dude. I just there was no reason for it. What happened? Double turn back. Oh, and then I got stuck in the ceiling. And then I built it. Oh, man, that was horrible. Yeah, you can look You can look over to my screen and see that I'm just messing up everywhere. Big time catch up. And then 8-2. I think 8-2 went pretty well. 8-2 is always so scary. It's always so scary because the pit. You never know what can happen with the pit. I don't have hammer suit. 
I got good RNG though, so I'm pretty happy. Oh yeah, we did that level nice and clean. Oh yeah. Jump on the turtle, do my safe strat, lost P speed for some reason. I don't know what's going on. So the ultimate question is, was my GDQ run bad? I would say this was probably my worst GDQ, GDQ run in terms of like how comfortable I felt uh, playing. The plus side is that we raised a lot of money for a good cause and that's what's important. It doesn't matter. I, I don't beat myself up over this, but um, I did dislike how uncomfortable I was with, you know, my temperature and I really, really needed some water and I felt locked in and, you know, not locked in like, like GDQ staff locked me in, but like, you know, I'm in the middle of my, I can't go anywhere. I'm in the middle of my run, right? The game's locking me in, not like, not anything bad or anything. And it just, so it was one of my most uncomfortable. I wasn't into it. I didn't really have much time to practice. My run was Sunday evening and I actually landed and got to the hotel at five in the morning on Sunday. So it really uh, wasn't, I wasn't used to that kind of layout for GDQ. I'm normally have runs on like Thursdays and Fridays. The Haxer and I have this like ongoing thing where, you know, if there's someone who's going to beat me in a GDQ race, I'd want it to be him because he practiced so much. This is someone like he's faced off against me in so many events. Like he deserves to get a win, but I'll never, I'll never let anyone win. I'll never not try. I'll always try my best. I would never throw a race to let them win. I feel like that's more of an insult, right? I, I, I'm, I'm curious as to what you guys think. Um, put in, put in the, the comments below if you guys think it's more disrespectful to, like, let someone win. Dude, if it's, like, my six-year-old sister and, like, she's in front of, like, her class, right? I'll let her beat me because it'll make her look cool at school and, like, it'll be a good thing. But, you know, in a competition like this where people try hard, I don't think it's fair to, like throw the race because i feel like they deserve the win you know i don't know I, I always feel like you know always try your hardest and then they really earn the reward kind of thing yes that is everything wrong with my gdq run it is unfortunate but uh i secured the win and i'm still i guess uh, number one for gdq races that's always a, that's always a cool thing next time guys so, all right so i'll see you around have a good night